The folks at One by One reached out to me and asked if I could review one of their record player options, and there were three listed. Uh, a couple of them had built-in amplifiers and speakers, but as far as stereo gear, I prefer separate components. So I went with their belt drive high fidelity turntable here. And just because this is a standalone unit doesn't mean that it does not have features. It has a built-in pre-amplifier so you can output line level as well as phono level. It has USB out so you can hook it up to a computer to digitize vinyl. And it has Bluetooth connectivity so that's always nice. Now I'll um, take this thing out of the box and check out the features on it. That's coming up on Thrifty AV. Quick disclaimer, the folks at One by One sent over this record player as a review sample. I consider review samples to be on loan. If the folks at One by One want this back, I'll be happy to send it back to them. I am not being paid for this review, and all opinions expressed in this video are my own. Now this is still in a box. I gotta take care of that. Before I cut into this box, I wanna mention that this was not the shipping box. This box was inside another box for shipping that helps protect the product. Also, it hides the fact that it is a piece of stereo gear, which, which is something that thieves tend to like. Thieves like stereo equipment. So I'm glad that it wasn't really uh, advertised on the external box that I was opening up a record player here. Okay, there is corrugated cardboard. This is nice. A quick start guide right on the top there. Sometimes I don't want to read the full instruction manual, but these quick start guides are pretty handy. All right, and the lid to the turntables right under that. One by one logo in the middle there. Okay, let's see if I can get this out. I don't know if that's real wood grain or artificial, but it is very nice looking. This is a bell drive with the motor over here. Oh, well, that's a power cable. There is a counterweight here for the tone arm. That's good. The aluminum platter has a little bit of heft to it. I have felt heavier, but I've also felt lighter, and the belt is already on the platter there. And it also came with a one by one branded felt mat. There's some stuff in a baggie here. We got the full instruction manual. We have a warranty card with customer service information. Oh, a cartridge alignment protractor. That's kind of nice. If I want to play 45s, there is an adapter here. Instead of having an anti-skate knob, this turntable has an anti-skate weight. Uh, I'll be putting this on the tone arm. And this little tool right here is going to help me thread the belt onto the motor. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and pull this off. And no sticky residue with that tape. It peeled off good. I'm gonna pull, and I think that's on. I did not have to use this tool because of the ribbon and the piece of tape here, but otherwise you can use this tool to take the belt on and off the spool there. I'm gonna go ahead and plug this in and make sure it spins. This is powered by a wall wart and uses a 12 volt barrel jack here. Let's power it on. I see a light come on, it says BT next to it. I assume that's Bluetooth and the platter is spinning. It's hard to tell, but this uh, anti-skate weight is basically hooked up with a little nylon thread here. <laughs> I'm really zoomed in tight here, but they said with the phono cartridge that comes with this, I should use the third notch here uh, for, my, for my little anti-skate weight. Now, if it seems to be gliding one way or the other, I can move it up a notch or down a notch and try to get the perfect balance on the anti-skate. I don't know the optimal mass for this uh, phono cartridge. I'm just gonna screw this on here and uh, figure out that adjustment later. Looking at the back of the turntable, here is the left and right audio outputs and a ground. Ground is very important if you're gonna select phono level. If you're selecting line level, not so important because this will be using its own built-in preamplifier. There's a USB so you can hook it up to a computer. 
And earlier I saw the Bluetooth light flashing. I'll figure out how to get that going in a little bit. Looking at the bottom of this unit, I want to point out that it has three feet, these two in the front and this one in the back. Having three feet can actually help you keep this plinth level, but I wanted to point that out because a lot of turntables have four feet. As I untwist tie the tone arm here, I want to talk about these two knobs. This knob here is the speed knob that will let you switch between 33 and a third and 45 RPM. And here is the start stop knob. This is not a DJ turntable, so it does not have a pitch control. It's just 33 R45. Also, there is no strobe light on this. It did come with a moving magnet cartridge. This is an Audio Technica 3600L. That is a, a budget cartridge, but Audio Technica makes pretty good stuff even in the budget lines. Now, if you wanted to change the cartridge out, it does have a standard mount, so you can do that. Okay, uh, right now the tone arm is pretty much level. I'm going to spin this around to three and a half grams, which is three and a half times around. And see how accurate I am. 3.68. That's pretty good. Back it off just a little bit. 3.52. That's close enough to 3.5 grams. I have an app called RPM Speed on my phone here. I'm going to go ahead and hit start. And turn this turntable on. Okay, I got 33.26, which is really close to 33 and a third. This may be within the margin of error of this app. It did register plus or minus 0.51% wow or flutter. That, I can't blame the turntable for that. That might just be that I don't have the phone perfectly balanced on this turntable because the mass of this phone can cause some wow and flutter. And I might as well also check it at 45. This came in just a touch low at 44.75 RPM. Again, this may be within the margin of error for this telephone app. Using the cartridge alignment tool, uh, the cartridge is aligned properly at this point. And it seems to also be aligned properly right there. So at those two points, the alignment is correct. So far I've left the lid off, but I'm gonna go ahead and slide the lid on at this point. And the turntable looks pretty attractive with this lid on. I've hooked up the line level output for the one by one turntable to my Tascam DR40 recorder, and I have the DR40 recorder feeding into these Hercules DJ Monitor 32 speakers. I'm gonna go ahead and hit record here, and I'm gonna record a needle drop on the soundtrack to Miami Vice. I cut that song way short for a very important reason. It is a copyrighted song and I would be hit with either a copyright notice or worse yet a copyright strike if I play too much of it. But I am continuing to listen to the Miami Vice soundtrack right now. It's Phil Collins in the air tonight. I have it turned down pretty low. You probably can't even hear it uh, because uh, I don't want to get a copyright notice on this one either. Uh, but I am noticing that the preamp on this is respectable. It's doing a pretty decent job when hooked up to my uh, little portable speakers here. Uh, I think it sounds pretty good. Uh, I will get a less subjective, more objective uh, test using a diagnostic test record here. Uh, short, ooh, that's the best part right there. I want to point out that this is not an automatic turntable. When it reaches the end of the record, it just keeps on spinning. It doesn't return to the tone armrest. It doesn't return to the beginning of the record. It doesn't automatically stop. You can, of course, lift up that bar and bring it to a resting position there and even lock it down if you're worried about the tone arm moving. 
and then stop the record and change your record out. I'm now going to record a left channel frequency sweep. I'm hitting record on the Tascam and I am dropping the needle. I did notice that the needle drop on this is rather slow using the lever, uh, but that is pretty gentle on your vinyl to do that. That's you know easy on the vinyl if it rests down slowly. Now this is just a test tone that comes right before the frequency sweep. Uh, the test tone is just so that you know what level you're looking at when the frequency sweep starts. You might have heard a little tone bleed through that was on the record. I did not change the audio levels uh, from when I was listening to the Miami Vice soundtrack. And the record level is a little bit conservative, a little bit low here. Uh, but the frequency sweep is fairly even. I'm not hearing a whole lot of uh, change in the volume. Of course, at the very low frequencies it's tapered off and in the uh, mid highs it is most pronounced and as we get up here into the high frequencies, well it tapers off again and at the extremely high frequencies it disappears altogether. I've switched the turntable from a line level input to phono level input in the back and I'm going to run it through this Rolls VP29 preamplifier and I'm going to play that same track. There's that same little bit of tone bleed through again that was on the record like that. I do notice that the Rolls uh, level is slightly higher than the built in USB with a similar noise floor so I think the signal uh, to noise ratio using the Rolls preamp is slightly better than the built-in preamp on the turntable. That's not saying the built-in preamp on the turntable is bad. It's just that the Rolls is a separate device and built specifically for this purpose. Now there is uh, a bit of a bit more of a bump in the mid highs uh, that I've already gone past. Now we're up in the upper frequencies and uh, it's starting to taper off as far as level goes in these upper frequencies. And it's typical for the very, very high frequencies to just become inaudible. Using the USB, uh, Windows 10 recognize the uh, USB is a microphone, USB microphone with stereo recording. I should point out that this is quite a bit louder. In fact, I turned down the playback on this frequency sweep because it was so loud that it was interfering with my voiceover. So there has been an adjustment on this audio so that the frequency sweep's not so loud. Uh, of course, there's that pronounced uh, bump in the middle there, which we just went past. Uh, where it is the absolute loudest and then it's going to taper off as we go into the higher and higher and higher frequencies. Uh, but all these curves look very similar regardless of how I've been listening to them. Uh, this one of course being louder but that's probably a good thing when I'm digitizing uh, music on my computer. The Bluetooth on the one by one will time out if you don't pair it with a device. So if you want to pair a device, power cycle using the switch on the back of the turntable. And now it is blinking and ready to pair. Now I have this Bluetooth speaker here. I'm going to power it up. It took a little bit, but uh, it made a noise while I wasn't rolling uh, on my camera. Uh, the speaker did. And now this light is solid and the light on my speaker is solid. This thing is ready to play. For the Bluetooth demonstration, I found an old LP that I hope won't get me in copyright trouble. This is the band Point Blank, Texas Boogie Rock from the 1970s, and it's connected and playing just fine through my Bluetooth speaker, so the Bluetooth does work. So that's my review of the 1x1 record player. Uh, there is an affiliate link in my description if you're interested in uh, buying one of these things. 
I do endorse the one by one belt drive turntable system. I like the fact that it was speed accurate. I like the fact that it came with a uh, Audio Technica moving magnet cartridge that was uh, in pre installed and pre aligned. The alignment was accurate. I didn't have to mess with that at all. It sounded good uh, with the built in uh, phono preamp plugged into my little portable speaker system. It sounded good using the uh, phono level input and my own preamplifier. It sounded good through the USB. It sounds good through the Bluetooth. So uh, any way you want to listen to this turntable is a good way to listen to this turntable. If you enjoyed this video, smash that like button. Thank you to my patrons for supporting this channel and remember, stay thrifty everyone.